Recovery plays an important role in your overall ability to build muscle and develop your fitness. And the only way we can have high quality workouts that push your body beyond its present capacity is if we're in a well recovered state with high energy levels. But how can you ensure that you have good recovery in between your workouts? And what techniques can we use to further enhance your recovery process? Because better recovery simply means better results as you're able to challenge your body to a greater extent and stay injury free long term. So in today's video, I will discuss seven simple science-based recovery tips that you can use to level up your recovery and start making more gains. Let's dive straight in by discussing the first tip, which is to stop chasing muscle soreness. In the realms of strength training, the idea of no pain, no gain has been popularized. While it is certainly true that we need to challenge ourselves to progress in fitness, this does not necessarily mean that we should also feel extremely sore after every workout. In fact, it is completely normal to not feel much soreness anymore after you stay consistent in your training for an extended period of time. Muscle soreness is a sensory response to having a high level of muscle damage, which refers to having micro tears in your muscles after training. Muscle damage is increased when you perform exercises that your body is not accustomed to yet or when you return back to working out after a training break. This is typically why you will notice that you feel extra sore after trying some new exercises in your routine or when you return from a holiday. The more often you perform certain exercises in your training, the less muscle damage and soreness they will produce over time. This is known as the repeated bout effect and it explains why it's perfectly normal you feel less sore as you train consistently. So if you are consistent in your training and are making good progress but no longer feel soreness anymore, that's completely normal. Feeling less sore over time is part of the training process. If you try to constantly chase muscle soreness, you will typically find yourself always doing more exercises and sets just to feel the muscle burn. But feeling a muscle burn or having sore muscles is not what produces progress. Getting stronger in the gym and improving your performance, that's what produces progress. Now, up to the second recovery tip, which is using temperature therapies post-workout as a way to potentially improve your muscle recovery. Think about temperature therapies like taking an ice bath or being in a sauna. An ongoing debate in sports sciences is whether it's better to use cold or heat therapy after your training sessions to improve muscle recovery. And there has been some interesting developments in the research that I would like to share with you. When it comes to heat therapy, a recent 2021 study found that heat therapy reduces muscle soreness after training. This supports the finding of an earlier 2017 study, which found that warming up the trained muscles to 38 degrees Celsius improves post-workout recovery. There is also research suggesting that heat therapy may improve anabolic signaling to muscle. So to enhance muscle recovery after training, exposing your muscles to heat via something like a hot shower or a sauna is worth a try. Now, about ice baths. Even though cold showers also tend to enhance muscle recovery, you may harm long-term adaptation if you regularly use ice baths after your workout. Using cold exposure after training impairs anabolic signaling. This typically results in lower rates of muscle protein synthesis. So if done consistently, taking ice baths after your workout can result in lower rates of muscle and strength development. A 2019 and 2020 study support this. Consistently using ice baths after training reduced muscle growth in the participants of these studies. So if you had to choose between heat exposure or cold exposure after training for muscle recovery without impairing muscle gain, then heat exposure is your safest bet. The third training tip is something you can use after training as well, and that is making use of active recovery. A 2016 study found that 10 minutes of low-intensity cycling after lower body training improves recovery from soreness. This likely was because low-intensity cardio after training facilitates a smoother decline in body temperature and increases muscle blood flow. We can also make use of active recovery on rest days. Say you train 4 times per week, going for a 30-minute outside walk helps with recovery due to the increased blood flow to muscle. We want to avoid strenuous cardio sessions if you're planning on having a complete rest day, but something like a walk or recreational outside cycling has recovery benefits. The fourth recovery tip is about making use of massages, including forms of self-massage like a foam roller. A 2018 review paper analyzed different post-exercise recovery techniques and the most beneficial recovery tool for alleviating muscle soreness and fatigue was getting a massage on the target muscle that has been trained. Now, I can imagine that massaging is not really a sustainable recovery tool because we can't expect that you will have a muscle massage after every tough training session that you do. But there is something to say for using self-massage tools like a foam roller as well. Foam rollers were really the hype a couple of years ago, but that trend has seemed to die down a bit, mostly because research has shown that the benefits are smaller than once expected. 
However, if the goal is reducing the sensation of soreness, foam rolling still is beneficial as indicated by research. Doing two sets of 10 to 15 second foam rolling on a sore muscle before training can help you train that muscle while experiencing less soreness. Now that we have looked behind the science of a few popular recovery tools, it is time to look into lifestyle related factors that you can take under your own control to benefit your recovery. And one of the key tips here is to manage your stress levels. A 2014 study by the University of Texas found that chronic psychological stress negatively affects muscle performance and recovery. When in a stressed state, your muscles simply take more time to recover. There is even research showing that wounds heal slower when psychological stress is high. So your body's recovery capacity is negatively impacted when stress levels are elevated. I definitely have empathy for those of you that are currently in a high stress environment. Sometimes life simply asks more of us and higher stress levels can be a part of this. And I'm not a life coach, but I have read up on some literature regarding the science behind stress management and I would like to share some insights with you. In the field of stress management, a popular framework is the four A's of stress relief. Avoid, alter, accept and adapt. These are typically the four coping tools we have when finding ourselves in a stressful situation. First, if you find yourself in a stressful situation you don't have to be in, you can simply take yourself out of this situation. Say for instance that having political debates on Facebook with keyboard warriors is causing you to have higher stress levels, you can simply take yourself out of this situation and avoid it altogether. Next, we aim to alter the stressful situations we cannot avoid. Address the root source of stress and aim to change the situation if it's under your control. These stressors we cannot avoid or change, we simply have to accept. And after this acceptance, we adapt to the stressors. Research also shows that there are some specific techniques that we can use to lower your overall stress levels. In one study, it was found that being more in nature, getting a massage and meditating are good ways to lower your stress. See this as useful information that you can apply whenever you find yourself in a high stress environment and it may help you improve your recovery which then also helps you improve your muscle gains. Another key component of your recovery will of course also be your sleep and out of all of the 7 recovery tips I discussed today, this one is by far the most important. While sleeping, the most powerful recovery processes of the body occur. This is why we see in the research that low sleep negatively impacts muscle recovery and performance. Getting a solid 7 to 9 hours of sleep on a daily basis would benefit the muscle recovery and performance of most people tremendously. And here are a few quick evidence-based sleep hygiene tips. First, aim to minimize eye contact with electronic displays that emit blue light. The blue light on your phone or TV suppresses melatonin production, which is the hormone that regulates sleep and wakefulness. Secondly, sleep in a cool, dark and quiet room. Artificial lights can disrupt sleep and so can noise from outside. Sleeping in a cool room can help you fall asleep more quickly because your body temperature first needs to drop before you can fall asleep. Thirdly, avoid caffeine at least 6 hours before bed. We know from research that caffeine disrupts sleep if it's taken closer than 6 hours before bed since caffeine is a stimulant of the central nervous system. The seventh and last recovery tip is to have good nutrition. If you are eating very little or have low quality foods throughout the day, this will impact your body's ability to recover from training. There are three core pillars we want to achieve with your nutrition to make sure that you are properly supporting recovery. We need enough daily calories, enough protein and nutrient-dense food options with an emphasis on fruits, vegetables and whole grains. Starting with calories, if you are underfeeding your body, you first won't have enough energy to actually train hard. But your body also won't have the energy to optimally fuel post-workout recovery. About protein, dietary protein are the building blocks of muscle. We literally use the amino acids found in protein to synthesize muscle proteins, which is what your muscles are made up of. So having at least 1.6 grams per kilogram of your body weight in protein is important here. And lastly, we want a nutrient-dense diet that is rich in vitamins and minerals so that your body has the nutrients it needs to support recovery processes and feel high in energy. As you see, there's a lot to discuss when it comes to muscle recovery, but really the keys are the last three tips discussed in this video. Managing your stress, sleeping well and having a balanced diet is 90% of the game. Tools like heat therapy, massages and foam rolling can help you further optimize your recovery process. And that was all for today's video. I hope you have gained some insights on how you can improve your muscle recovery. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in that next video.